All right, guys, we've got a train unit having some issues, so uh, let's go check it out and see what the problem is. two years old so I typically usually feel better about coming back and double checking anything that's that new don't have any fault codes out here on the defrost board which this is just a what do we got here? 16 seer two and a half ton so we'll check vitals first which it's kind of like going to the doctor's office first thing they want to do is check your temperature and your blood pressure so kind of the same way with a air conditioning system you want to check your temperatures and your pressures and then take it from there kind of what we try to tell newer guys coming into it like every time you go to the every time you go to the doctor's office they pull out the thermometer and that blood pressure cuff and they check your pressures and your temperatures so that's usually a good place to start with an air conditioner there depending on how this looks we'll move to the air handler and check sensors other things that might be a problem see if the fault codes came back um, they were related to uh, I think a low superheat and he said the suction pressure was dropping down to like 70 but he reset the air handler he said check the sensors they were all fine Reset the air handler, and everything seemed to run okay. But just wanted to come out and double check it. Pull my field piece app up and see what our pressures are. 410A. Not good. 63 over 241. Hmm. 55 superheat and a 6 subcool. Let's see what our subcool is supposed to be. Cooling is supposed to be eight degrees, and it is six. So looking at braze joints real quick. Out here, no oil. The 
bunch of those rabbits that hang out around this thing. It's probably whatever these plants are over here. Looks like damn lettuce. There's no oil down here in the bottom where you typically have leaks. I don't have any oil. Inside that cap or anywhere on the line that would indicate a core blowing out that much refrigerant. He did add about 10 ounces last night. But what I'm seeing now is not what he said he left with. So got a leak somewhere. Probably gonna head on under the house at this point. Let me go grab the leak detector and uh, we'll go under the house and start looking under there. Under the house, get the door off of this thing. We've got the outdoor unit off, letting the pressure, air temperatures, excuse me, stabilize out in here so I can test the sensors, see what the sensors are doing. Make sure our stepper motor is testing properly as well before I get it off let me go in here and see what my fault codes were or any fault history in this thing uh, looking at the alert menu in here active alerts alert history EVC fault. Nothing in here is a central fault for the EVC. So, it happened nine times. I'm not getting another fault in the history, and I'm not getting any active alerts. So, we're going to pull this thing open. And, uh, in here and see what's going on. A lot of the times it's a some type of a sensor. I hate that they go out so frequently and so easily if you want to say that. But I mean it's just lock off and spread these wires out a little bit so I can lay that door down and get up here a little closer so I got the door in here that's where I'm going to check my sensors at Oddly, oddly noticing is that this air handle or these sensors aren't insulated. If you look at this, these sensors, hey, um, yeah, go ahead. Um, which is probably normal, yeah, uh huh. We'll check that. Let's get it fixed first, oh, <laughs> and then I'll follow up on that when I get through okay, I just with this. I That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Well, when I get it running full blast, we'll go up in there and check it. But it looks like it, it's just showing a low pressure reading again. So I need to check some sensors and stuff in here and see what we've got going on. But yeah, once we get that straightened out, I'll go in there and listen to it. And we'll see what see what we can figure out on that. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> But if anybody's familiar with TAM air handlers, you know these sensors are always insulated in these air handlers, and in this one they are not. 
so just curious if that affects the accuracy of those sensors that much because they are always insulated. It's the first time I've ever opened up one of these air handlers and not seen insulation and there's no sign that there's ever been any insulation on there because usually it sticks to the pipe and there's residue there, pieces of that insulation. There's nothing on these to show they've ever been insulated. So let me test them and then we'll insulate them and see what happens. I'll do a quick buzz with the leak detector but I don't see any oil here. I don't see any. Usually it's on these little air deflectors. I'm not seeing that. And she was asking about a noise when the unit's running I guess full speed in the house like a vibration type thing so Good deal with that. This thing is on Unistrut and it's hanging from the floor. And I think I've said in past videos I prefer blocks as opposed to hanging it from the floor. So it's all about noise transfer. Let me get my needle leads on here real quick. And my temperature probe. Let's see what kind of air temperature we've got going through here. aluminum so the probe's not gonna stick to it so stepper motor is positioned properly these pipes should be breathing pretty close so let's grab the book Someone has walked away with should be in this bag and it is not, especially when it was on site. Somebody took it. So anyway, we got a kind of a general idea. It should be about one point four five somewhere in that range for one point six and one point two. 1.3 1.2 so I'm going to have to go reference a book real quick I do believe you possibly have a sensor out of range one of these is reading 1.28 volts DC the other one's reading 1.7 that doesn't sound like a big difference but for these sensors it is so let me go grab a book, confirm those temperatures, and figure out which sensor we've got a problem with. Okay, we're back. My Hyperion air handler book. We have two different versions, one in black and white, one in color. Pretty much just has the service facts for the different TAM air handlers in it. So this will have my chart for these sensors. It's set here for about another seven minutes. temperature roughly around this area I mean it's reading the pipe surface temperature where each one of these sensors is located but we're gonna be right in that 70 degree range roughly maybe the pipes just a little bit colder that sensor up there the metal will be a little bit colder but it's odd that they're supposed to have insulation on them 
I don't have any. I, have to wait. I got a guy coming behind me. He's doing the maintenance here. I wanted to check it before he got here to clean it. But we'll get some insulation off his truck. <clears throat> and we'll wrap those and insulate them. But right now I want to figure out which one's reading inaccurately. So we're going to check our coil temperature sensor here first, which is the orange. That sensor is giving me, you can see, 1.3 volts DC. It should be pretty much exactly the same as they're reading the same temperature at this point. Now I'm testing against my black to black. I was checking orange to orange. <clears throat> now we're checking that sensor right there. And we are reading at about 1.7 volts DC. So we've got one at 1.3 and one at 1.7. And they should be reading the same temperature right now. And according to our book, 1.3 volts DC is, let me check, 1.3 what? Let's break it down real quick. One, Point. So I'm getting 1.31 volts DC, and according to this chart, 1.29 is 82 degrees. So 1.31 will be about 81 degrees. It ain't 81 degrees inside this air handler, especially on one of these refrigerant lines. So that sensor's bad. The other one is telling us 1.69. And 1.69 is more like it, about 66, 60, that'd be about 67 degrees, which we were measuring 69 right here with the probe. That metal is probably about a degree colder, degree and a half colder. So this one's reading correctly. This one is not. So we're going to swap it out real quick and we're going to redo our check. And then we may have to adjust our refrigerant charge on this. Possibly. Because uh, I think he did try to make a refrigerant adjustment, but. It was about 8 o'clock when I was on the phone with him last night and he said the sensors were both testing correctly, so it doesn't seem to be the case here, but what he was looking at, 8 o'clock at night, he's been working since 7.30 in the morning, a little bit burned out, maybe just didn't read something completely correct I'm positive about this not being insulated and I'm going to have to sit here and try to peel all that mess off because it uh, <laughs> it makes a mess and it's hard to get off so I'm going to snap that new sensor on there I remember when you're replacing one of these coils you have to put this sensor back on this particular line with this capillary tube coming off because this is feeding your evaporator if you put it on one of these other ones they all channel back to your suction line manifold which comes back here so you're going to be reading the wrong temperature there's only one place that sensor goes and it's on this pipe and as soon as somebody replaces the evaporator coil it gives you a call it tells you they're having a problem if it's one of these tell them to go back and confirm they put the orange coil sensor on the proper pipe that connects to this capillary tube It comes back off your metering device. That's the only place that sensor goes. So, that's, uh, that's happened a few times. I did it one time about eight years ago and chased a ghost for 45 minutes until I realized I'd put the sensor in the wrong spot. You can do it. Anybody can do it. It happens place enough of these coils <laughs> and uh, 
We've replaced a lot of them. Because we put in a lot of them. But, uh, yeah, always go back if you put a coil in and you got some funny readings. Go back, make sure you put your sensors back in the in the right location. If that no neck came off, so easy I'd already popped it off. Anyway, get through that, that through there. Plug that up, and now let's see what our sensor is reading. Our new sensor, anyway. Orange to orange. Right there. It was reading 1.3 while ago. Now it is reading 1.68. Now I'm going to connect to the other sensor because they're pretty much both reading the same temperature right now with the outdoor unit off and air flowing through here. 1.68, 1.7. So we're right on the money. So we now have two sensors that are operating properly. And what happens is what you got to understand about this unit. <coughs> when you're running an air conditioning, this one's reading your coil sensor, your coil temperature. This one's reading your suction line temperature. So this is actually measuring superheat right here. And then based on what that's doing, it's going to throttle that EEV back there open and closed for more refrigerant less refrigerant it's trying to maintain that superheat on this coil and if the temperatures are reading out incorrectly like that one was reading 82 degrees when it was actually supposed to be reading 68 degrees that's a 14 degree difference so there's already a 14 degree superheat on the system and it's not running so imagine what happens when it starts running and now you, you're, you're reading the wrong spread it's going to start causing this valve to do things it's not supposed to be doing and it's going to throw off your pressures and the system's not going to run right you'll get low superheat high superheat all kinds of stuff starts going on and then this thing eventually you're going to see one of these red lights flashing and you're going to have a fault so luckily in this case i only think i think the problem was a sensor pretty sure this coil doesn't have a leak in it it's only a year and a half old wouldn't put it past them but uh, when we get it back up and running, and check the charge, we'll know. All right, guys, we made the sensor change. Now we're back out here. I got the unit running. And as you can see, the pressures are much better. Still waiting for that blower. It's got that profile where it runs at 50%, 80%, 100. But earlier we were running about 60 suction. We're up much higher. And that was the kind of the tip off with me because well, good. we had like a 30 or 40. I can't remember what the pressures were. I had to go back and watch the video. We had like a suction pressure in the 60s. It's 72 degrees out here right now. And it's 71 in the house. Not a big heat load on the system. But we had the high superheat. But our subcooling was like 6.5 out of 8. So if we were that low on the suction that it was an undercharge issue, our subcooling would have been zero or one maybe two at the best it wouldn't have been six and a half out of eight this unit requires an eight degree subcooling look on the sticker so as you can see compare those to the pressures we were having before we replaced that sensor you can see they're starting to come up the blower is probably running now at about the 80 percent speed we got a 7.6 subcool out of eight 29 superheat as this thing runs and that coil, these pressure stabilized. It's only been on for about five minutes now, six. You gotta let these things run for 10 minutes, pretty much. Airflow maxes out to get an accurate charge. I may have to adjust it, because he did say he made a small adjustment in the charge, but it wasn't, it wasn't a charge problem, it was a sensor problem. So if, if those two sensors aren't me measuring accurate superheat across that coil, they're going to cause that indoor metering device to open, close, open, close, do all kinds of crazy crap. But if you're not familiar with it, you're going to come out here and look at it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to put some refrigerant in it. Like I've seen on some other guys on here that have come up on TAM equipment and train equipment. And they're not familiar with it. First thing they want to do 
because as soon as it's low on charge and start dumping stuff into it, you're just going to screw it up even worse and make your problem ten times what you had. Like I said in another video before, check your sensors, all match your stepper motors, make sure all the the parts that are supposed to calculate that information for the unit are working properly because if they're not, the unit's not going to do what it's supposed to do. And then you come out and start dumping refrigerant in one of these things and it, and it didn't need it. Or you start taking Freon out of it and now it's undercharged and you still haven't fixed the problem that's creating that issue. So read up on these units guys, find a book. They're not that bad. Everybody talks all kinds of trash. I work on them all the time. I've been working on these units now for 12 years with the company I'm with. And I pretty much know them inside out for the most part. So, yeah, it's easy for me to say all this. But if you're not familiar with something these days, I have to do it. I show up on carriers, new carrier stuff, that buy stuff. I, I go find material and start reading before I start dumping Freon in something or telling a homeowner they got a leak, it's low on charge. You know, I, you got, you just have to, it's just what you have to do these days. And if you're not going to do that, then just keep on working, keep working on Goodman's the rest of your life and uh, you'll be okay. But anyway, guys, that was the problem. We had an indoor temperature sensor bad on the air handle. But, uh, that's pretty much probably going to be our problem. I just need to come back and insulate these. When the guy gets here, I can get some stuff and, and insulate them. You want them reading accurately. But uh, that's a TAM air handler with a bad temperature sensor. Seems to be a common problem. Uh, the coil thing seems to have gotten itself worked out in the last couple of years. Um, haven't had as many of those as we were having in... 18, 19, 2020, 2021, it started to kind of taper off a little bit. Still find the occasional one, but I think we're going to be good to go, guys. So that's it. Appreciate you guys watching. Like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.